Hello everyone, welcome back to my video. In this video, I'm going to show you two Tesla coins. One is purchase and the other one is homemade. The first one that you see here is actually a musical Tesla coin, which is pretty cheap. And as you can see here, it's playing Super Mario music from the Nintendo FC Mobile over there. Alright, here's the schematics of the musical Tesla coin which was purchased. It uses the popular Slayer Exciter method to work, meaning it has an MPN transistor, such as this BD243C. The BD243C is a bipolar Johnson transistor, and it will oscillate the primary coil here, which will then in turn oscillate the secondary coil, which produces the arc. Note that this transistor gets really hot, so the heat sink alone is not sufficient. That's why I install a 5 volts fan to cool down the heatsink. As for the MOSFET here, it does get warm but the heatsink is sufficient, so you, you do not need the fan. The rest of the circuitry here are for the Tesla coil to play music, so I will not compare this with the DIY Tesla coil which I'm going to show you. Alright, here's the schematics of the DIY Tesla coil which I'm going to show you. The main difference you notice is that there is no MPN transistor which is used to oscillate the circuit. Instead we have a spark gap here and the spark gap basically acts as a switch to turn on and off the circuit which will oscillate the primary coil which will then in turn oscillate the secondary coil which produces the arc. Unlike the musical Tesla coil which you've seen earlier, the arc produced by this DIY Tesla coil is going to be much weaker. So we are able to touch the top load or the torus and you do not get burned by the plasma. For the DIY Tesla coil, the main ingredient is the high voltage circuit from a fly zapper like this one here. I'm not going to go through the steps of how to build the DIY Tesla coil, but I'll post a link to the plasma channel video where a plasma channel YouTuber actually goes through all the steps in making the DIY Tesla coil. As you can see by now, the DIY Tesla coil here has a much weaker arc than the one that was purchased. I have to dim the light in order to see the arc that was drawn. And here I've added a top load and that will help to increase the length of the arc but not by much. Let me show you. At this point, we could see that the purchased Tesla coil throws an arc which is strong enough to be visible in daylight. So you do not need to use a metal to draw the arc, unlike the DIY Tesla coil, which the arc can only be seen clearly if you use a metal to draw the arc or if you use a finger to draw the arc. This DIY Tesla coil is pretty much portable as you can see here. The 3 volts power supply are just two AA batteries, whereas the purchased Tesla coil requires a 6S LiPo pack and it has to be of sufficient capacity because the purchased Tesla coil would draw 2 amps of power at 24 volts. So 24 volts times 2 amps, that's 48 watts of power, which is a lot. As you can see, I'm using two high capacity 3 cell LiPo packs hooked up in series to make up 6S in order to supply 48 watts of power to the Tesla coil. And this leads us to the question of portability. I came across this interesting step-up device on AliExpress, which could be the solution to our problem. It takes in 5 volts on one end and outputs 24 volts on the other end. So I'm hoping that if I could hook up a power bank here using this USB plug, then I could output 24 volts to the Tesla coil. Can this device really step up 5 volts from a power bank to deliver 48 watts of power to this Tesla coil? Let's find out. Here I have a 5000 mAh standard power bank. I'm going to hook up the USB to the high speed charging port. And here I'm powering on the power bank. As you can see the power bank has been fully charged. Now let's power up the Tesla coil. But before that, let's take a look at the status of the setup. 
Alright, the red LED here indicates that it is working. So now let's power it up to see what happens. We should be able to see an arc if everything is working. Oh, there's an arc and it only goes on for a while. And now there's no power. And also the status LED light. Let's turn off. Looks like this power bank does not deliver enough juice for the step up to supply the 48 watts of power. Let's try a bigger power bank. Here I have a 12,000 mAh power bank. Once again, I'm going to hook up the USB to the high speed charging, which is 2.1 amps. Power up the power bank. Strange is only showing one bar. It's strange because it's fully charged. Yep, it's fully charged as you can see. But the moment I hook it up to the step up, power drops immediately. Yep. And the LED doesn't even light up. So this power bank performs worse than the 5000 mAh one. Anyway, I'm going to try to power up the Tesla coil to see what happens. Nope. No lights here. And no power to the Tesla coil at all. Absolutely no power. Well, looks like this device is unable to supply the 48 watts of power using both power banks. That's unfortunate. Well, since both power banks do not work for the step up, I decided to test the step up with using a one cell LiPo pack. I do not have a one cell LiPo pack, but I do have a three cell 4000 mAh, which is pretty high capacity. And here I have a balance connector, which I have made specifically to tap one cell from this LiPo pack. The step up has been powered on. And let's wait for a while for it to charge up its capacitors. Alright, now let's power on the Tesla coil using it. Well, but the problem is these wires here are getting pretty hot. And I need to disconnect the balance tab before it melts the plastic. Well, so much for a comparison video. I hope you learned something about the DIY Tesla coil versus the purchase Tesla coil. By now you should have made the choice whether you like to go for the purchase one or you want to DIY and make yourself this Tesla coil here. And as you can see here, I'm back to the old power configuration that is powering the Tesla coil with a 6S LiPo pack and using a balance tap to supply one cell power to power the 5 volt fans which are essential to prevent the NPM transistor from burning out. As far as portability, the DIY Tesla coil definitely wins because you could just bring it out and show it off to your friend. As for the purchase Tesla coil, you need to bring your own power supply which are these bulky 6S LiPo batteries. There's one last trick. Remember this CCFL from my last video with this inverter? I realized that if I try to pull an arc from the DIY Tesla coil which is pretty weak, using this inverter here I will get a pretty nice arc. Let me show you. It's the arc without using the inverter. Could barely see the up. And now with using this inverter here, see that? Much stronger arcs with using this inverter. Now I do get a nasty Z, so I have this plastic to insulate myself from the inverter circuitry. 
That's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoy this video and subscribe if you like this type of videos.